This video has been produced to provide best practice on the installation of Gradus Care Zone carpet with specific focus on textured loop pile. Chapter 1. Preparation As with any carpet installation, ensuring the carpets are conditioned in the premises for 24 hours is critical in ensuring the product is kept stable. The carpet should be stored in temperatures similar to those expected during use. It is not just critical for the carpet to be conditioned and stored correctly. Ancillary products such as adhesives and seam sealers should also be stored in the same manner. Before opening the carpet from the packaging, it is essential to take note of the batch number of the roll being installed. This is for two reasons. Firstly, should you need to match future carpet to this batch, or secondly, if there is an issue, then there is a reference to refer back to. The carpets themselves do not have a batch number written on them. Everything mentioned so far is covered in BS 5325, which is the recognized code of practice for installation of textile floor coverings. This standard will contain detailed information, such as moisture testing, which cannot be included in the video. As well as the carpet and ancillary products, here are the tools you will need. Chapter 2 Product Assessment The product we are looking at today is CareZone Textured Loop Pile, which is designed to be more durable in heavy traffic areas such as corridors when compared to cut pile equivalents. The underside of the carpet shows the backing, which in this case is an Aquabac impervious backing, which prevents liquids from reaching the substrate. It is often used in applications such as care environments. As you can see, the edge curl on the carpet is visible. However, this can easily be rectified once adhered. Chapter three, measuring. It is critical to ensure accurate measuring is done to maximize product utilization. It is best practice to lay the carpet in the direction of the traffic, as this takes maximum advantage of the wear characteristics of the carpet. This also minimizes the number of seams that are required. Chapter four, identifying loop lines. There are loop lines that run along the length of the carpet, and it is important when installing the carpet that any cuts made are between these loop lines. One method of identifying loop lines is with a row finder. A row finder is designed to separate rows, leaving a visible line that can be followed when cutting. It also minimizes the chances of damaging rows when cutting. The preferred method recommended by Gerflor and Gradus is by pulling a thread to physically remove one loop run from the length of the carpet at the position where cutting is required. Chapter 5. Cutting the Carpet By using the preferred method of pulling a thread before cutting, the scrim of the carpet is now visible. To ensure seamless joins, when cutting the carpet following this line, the knife should be held at a slight angle. A seam should never be created using a manufactured edge or cutting through the back of the carpet. Before applying any adhesive, ensure the two drops of carpet to be joined are correctly aligned. Chapter six, bonding the carpet. Using the correct notch trowel specified by the manufacturer, apply the adhesive to workable sections of the installation area. For long runs, this may require folding back the carpet and working in smaller sections. For some subfloors, the carpet will need to be laid into the adhesive immediately. Some subfloors may require you to leave the adhesive to flash off before laying the carpet into the adhesive. Lay the first section of the carpet into the adhesive and smooth into place by hand. Use a carpet glider to ensure adequate transfer of the adhesive onto the backing of the carpet before moving on to the next section of the floor. Chapter seven, seam sealing. Once the first cut has been laid into the adhesive, 
seam sealing the open edge should be completed to enable the two pieces of carpet to be bonded together and also to prevent the carpet fibers from fraying. The seam sealer contains a liquid applied using a special applicator. Once prepared, apply the seam sealer along the open cut edge, applying a generous amount to ensure both the pile and backing are bonded together and also to the next cut of carpet. The join is now ready to receive the second cut of carpet, which should be installed using the same methods as the first cut. Special attention should be given to ensuring that both sections of carpet join together adequately with no adhesive reaching the face of the carpet. Once the join is in place, a carpet seam roller can be used. A carpet seam roller is designed to help bring the carpet fibers together to show as little of the seam as possible. Chapter 8. Cutting and Finishing when approaching walls, skirting boards, and other obstacles around the perimeter of an installation, it is important to ensure the correct cutting and finishing methods are used for a quality finish. Use a speed cat to crease the edge of the carpet where it meets the perimeter. A speed cat is specifically designed to speed up the creasing and tucking process with its three tucking wheels, creasing and tucking the carpet as required. After creasing, cut the carpet to the perimeter, leaving just enough material to tuck away the cut edge when finishing. Ensuring adhesive is applied right up to the perimeter is essential when installing and can be completed in sections to allow for the initial cutting of the product. This method avoids the backing of the carpet being lifted back out of the adhesive once set and allows for adequate seam sealer to also be applied to stop the carpet fraying at any cut edges. Once adhered, the final step is to use a tucking knife to tuck the carpet to a neat finish. The speed cat can also be used to tuck the carpet. 